So, I'm at a part in this movie where um, it shows how the baby died. Um, if you go back in my videos, um, I'm still watching the same movie. Um, so, yeah, it shows how the baby had passed. It was some white man coming with they, um, their chains their whips and their cuffs and the mom panicked she seen that this white man or these white people were coming to take her babies take her two sons the one that was our, the ones that were already grown and as well as if they wanted the babies they would be able to take the babies as well so good thing they caught her just before she finished them off and they still had a chance. Um, so she took her babies and she ran into the shed. And she killed them. You kept, you would hear the, I heard the sons screaming, Mommy, 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 no, Mommy. So when they made it in, she was just in the middle of killing her youngest the oldest was already dead um the two boys were laying on the ground still holding one last breath the grandma came in there and was you know shaking them waking them and they eventually woke up the baby, she was swing in the middle of swinging the baby until that baby was dead. But the the dad, the father came in there and caught that baby just in time. And the oldest baby was in her hands, and that one unfortunately passed and died. It had already died. Um. But this this brings me to a, a part in the Bible where it says, it speaks on this woman and how nothing or no one could comfort her. You know, she always lived with that fear. You know, that anger inside. That anger of the past, traumatized. Sick in thought leads to sickness in the body if you're up there too long and eventually the body will follow along so whatever possessed her to do what she did was all because of what she had experienced with those people and what she knew and the um when she tried to explain herself to the guy he just couldn't understand her he told her you know there's only so much you can do. He told her she was wrong. She shouldn't have did that. Because he was just thinking about having a family with her. He wanted her pregnant. And when somebody came to him with the article about what she had did to her children, and that's that's what that's what leaves her, you know, a lot of people despise her and they look at her in disbelief and they just no one wants anything to do with her because of what happened. And these same people, you know, they're passing that same story around. And in this town or anywhere, she is very disliked. They don't look at her with, you know, um, pity or mercy or anything. They despise her. Um, they don't know what she's been through, but they know what's in the articles. Um, just like the one guy said, he was like, as long as we are, as long as the white people rule the world, this is where we stand. So there's only so much they can do. There's only so much you can hear. And the story just goes on and on in her own people. You know, she doesn't have any comfort anywhere. You know, so she's stuck with this. She's stuck with the anger um, because she know what they did. You know, it's a lot of love in her heart. And that's what he said. He was like, your love is too thick. 
And he was like, your daughter can't even go an inch in the yard and your two boys has run away. But what, like in the beginning, it shows that the, those boys only run away because of what was going on in that house. You know, and it shows that. But at the same time, he may have a point because you you're too you're isolating your kids like but that's the thing these kids you know he don't know the story he's kind of twisting it up but he's only going by what he's hearing you can tell this guy really loves her he really loves her but at the same time it's he has to take all of this in you know he don't know what went on he wasn't there so it's kind of unfair in a way but she, so this is the, um, the part in the Bible I want to read about is like, how she sits alone, the city once crowded with people. She who was great among the nations has become like a widow. The princess among the provinces has been put to forced labor. She weeps aloud during the night, the tears on her, with tears on her cheeks. There is no one to offer her comfort, not one from all her lovers. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile, following affliction and harsh, harsh slavery. She lives among the nations but finds no place of, to rest. All her pursuers have overtaken her in narrow places. The roads of Zion mourn. For no one comes to appointed festivals. All her gates are deserted. Her priests groan. Her young women grieve. And she herself is bitter. Her adversaries have become her masters. Her enemies are at ease. For the Lord has made her suffer because of her many transgressions. Her children have gone away as captives before the adversary. All her splendor has vanished from daughter Zion. Her leaders are like stags that find no posture. They walk away exhausted before the hunter. During the days of her affliction and homelessness, Jerusalem remembers all her pre precious belongings that were hers in days of old. When her people fell into, fell into the adversary's hand, she had no one to help. The adversaries looked at her, laughing over her downfall. Jerusalem has sinned grievously. So this is kind of what it reminds me of, you know. Killing bloodshed of her children, it was a big sin, you know. And her people fell because of this, fell from grace of other people, fell from, you know, society, because now society's society looks down on them. But what I'm what I am saying is that when you have nobody to lean on, you have no support, you have no one to change those eyes, you have no one to put the light in your eyes. You leave a person in a dark place such as this woman and you don't and you expect her to be okay to allow things and not have any type of resistance towards the situation. What people do affects lives. What you do to people traumatizes them to the point where they feel like they got to react in a way they shouldn't. Or, you know, and then it's a lot of people that, you know, they just don't understand what this woman is going through. They don't understand... But the fact they don't care to understand as well. Just as that guy handed him that article and changed his mind about this having a woman with this body, she with having a baby by this woman, she didn't have the chance to right her wrongs. A lot of people don't give people chances to right their wrongs. This baby in this situation, the fact that this man loved this woman enough to have another baby, to have created a family with her could have made could have get this could have been her chance. This could have been her chance to right her wrongs from what had happened with her last child. Like maybe this baby could have been another girl, you know, to right her wrongs. A gift from the Lord. 
But it's like a lot of people try to, you know, cloud other people's judgment. That's why you shouldn't tell your business to too many, so many people. You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't spread your your business. You know, he was happy. He was excited. You know, you can tell he's a pure a pure heart. He's very innocent, and he's he loves truly. He loves um, honestly. He's loyal. He's a good man, and he loves her. And that's all that matter. Like, he really loves her. But at the same time, it's just like when you you allow that to, you know, a lot of people in the workplace, a lot of people on the outside knows a little bit more about um, what's been going around. And that's the thing. When I said I didn't have much friends in school, it's more because of I was living in basically a judgment zone. That's how I felt. You know, I was always being judged on the outside. I was being judged by the people that I, you know, I hung around. A lot of my friends were so, you know, good. A lot of my friends were, like, um, were seen as, uh, you know, you know, um, <laughs> a lot of people out here like Nicki Minaj, blah blah blah, that type of status. Those how my friends was. They was look, they was look, they was frowned upon by other people because they weren't good enough. You know the fact that they slept with this person, they had parties, they did this, they did that. You know, and that was all you know reflected on me, projected on me, and I didn't care because you know I'm a I'm an honest person, and I knew these people. Um, more than anybody else. So, it's like, um, when you live in that type of judgment zone, it is hard for you to have a chance. So, when a person comes into your life, it's like, I didn't, it's like a lot of my chances, I feel like, was taken away from me because of these people on the outside. Every time a person came in to, you know, get to know me, get to know my life, they didn't have enough time to to kind of have their own mind towards the situation. They didn't have enough time to build that connection with me or for there to be any type of connection because all of these people on the outside was quick. Just like that guy handed him that article about this woman, they was quick to hand, hand over some, you know, give some type of doubt, um, plant some type of doubt towards the situation. So, yeah, it's just like, a lot of people just don't understand, and it's it's really, really sad because a lot of people take away from chances. And that's uh, that's why I, I threw out there, you know, it's good to travel the world. It's good, to, it's good to get away from everybody. Whenever you have a chance to move, it's good to move because that's a, that's a new chance for you. That's a new light for you to shine, you know. Um... And there's a lot of ways I can go with that. But it's it's good for you to do that. But at the same time, she's strong. Because no matter what's going on, she stayed there. And who, no matter whoever comes in there, she's honest about it. She's like, yeah, you know, this is what happened. And if you want to take some time and... um. If you want to step away, then go ahead and do that. But at least you know the truth. And that's what I'm saying. No, they A lot of people like that is doing you a favor if you look at it in that way. They are, get, they are doing you a favor, you know. And at least it's, you know, it's, I don't have to. I don't have to walk around with this on my shoulders to where I don't know how to tell you this later on. You know, at least they told you. Now it makes it easier for me, and that's the thing. You know, a lot of people think they're making the situation harder when they're actually making it easier for you. You're making it easier for this person to kind of form their own judgment upon, you know, form their own judgment have their own judgment, give them something to think about, you know, just in case, you know, I don't get to that part, you got to that part for me, you know, you told them, so I didn't, I mean, I would have eventually told them, but I didn't get around to it, so you just, you know, you made it, you, you had made it happen faster, you know, you made it easier for me, thank you, 
So it's a lot of good, right? I mean, it's a lot of good things you can get out of that. You know, it's not always a bad situation. It's not always something that's, you know, if you just let life unravel for itself, then that's how it is. But it's, like I said, it's just, I feel more bad for that person because, like I said, for her, because it's like they're going by the outside. They're pulling out this out outer layers, but she's still dealing with all of this inside. You know, the fact that they didn't get to know her and they're already trying to pull people away from her, she's still, maybe, you know, it's a lot of times where these people that you're pulling away from is God's angels, God's, you know, people and angels in disguise that he's trying to send these people into her life so that she can heal. But the fact that all of these people, you know, you have this circle, all, all these people against you, and they're pulling every single person that God sends into your life away from you, it just makes it harder. You know, it makes it harder. And it's just like they got to work through all it is, you know, and eventually, eventually they'll come around, but maybe they won't. And then that's just another person, you know, pulled away from you, another blessing. You know, that's what I'm saying. People can be blessings as well that God sent into your life. And it's just another blessing taken away from you because of, you know, they're pulling those strings. They're trying to take everybody away from you because they see everybody sees wrong on you. You know, they always they see you for wrong, but they they don't spend enough time with you to get to know your situation, get to know you on the inside, or even even help you heal or support oh, you in any way. So it's like she's going through all this on her own. So it's like, you know, for you to sit around and tell me I'm wrong. Yes, you go ahead and take some time to yourself and try to figure out, you know, what you want to do. Because inside, I know I'm not wrong. I, inside, I know what I've been through. But if you need that time to step away so that you can kind of, you know, okay. have some understanding, then you do that. Because she doesn't have any regrets and she has every right to feel that way. So yeah, that's just my little intake on a um situation and what um about this movie. I'm still watching. I'm still up. <laughs> I'm just dropped this off. I'm still not done with it, but eventually, you know, as soon as I get finished with it, I have more, you know, insight because this movie is just, you know, it's it's the go. You know, it's the go to. I love this movie. So, yeah, um, that's just, I just needed some clarity about it. And as well as it reflected on me in a way, you know, I, yeah, I have experience with feeling with everything that she's going through with people in my own life. So, yeah, I can kind of relate to the situation. So, I just want to uh, throw that out there. Um, so, yeah.